Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Eagles Film Room here on Philly Sports Network with myself Liam Jenkins where today we're taking a look at the puzzling case of Wendell Smallwood. Now the West Virginia product who led the Big 12 in rushing in 2015 had an impressive rookie year for the Eagles before it was cut short due to an injury. With a revamped backfield in 2017, the sky was the limit, and with Corey Clement pushing him every step of the way in training camp, the thought was that Smallwood was running harder and more aggressive than ever and could be a feature back behind LeGarrette Blunt. That never came to fruition, but he had plenty of opportunities to prove himself worthy. So what happened to Wendell Smallwood, and what does the future hold? What I did for this video was take all of Smallwood's rookie season tape and compare it to what we saw in 2017. The one concurrent theme we saw between the two was that he can still hit the hole hard. He's a running back that's decisive and can follow his blocks very well, patient behind one of the best offensive lines in football. Now, with that being said, Smallwood is very much a zonal running back. The reason being is that he doesn't really have that burst or that second gear once he's in the open field, and we'll see this throughout the video. When the pocket's clean, when he's able to get through an open hole like we see here, the rest is easy for Wendell Smallwood, but he doesn't have that next level acceleration to really extend that damage, to really bury the hatchet into the defense. However, his one touchdown of the year did come against the LA Chargers, and what we see is a back, as we say, who can assertively hit the hole when he knows where the ball's going. He squares his shoulders and is able to now dive forward for those extra yards and quite literally hit and leap over the defense to make sure he's in for the score. He may not be the best north-south runner in the league. That's not to say there weren't flashes of potential. Look at this phenomenal run against the Denver Broncos that really did just drive the Eagles down the field. We'll take a closer look right now. Smallwood makes a great cut. It's something we don't see very often. It's very instinctive. And that opens up a nice lane. But then he's met with a second blocker. He puts the ball to his inside and then moves again to get to the open field. That's an intuitive play by Wendell Smallwood. Ball security seems to be in heightened focus there. And right there, he's lowering his pads and trying to drive through the tackle. So let's take a look at Smallwood, the outside rusher, since that was where he was used most predominantly for the Eagles in 2017 and where he was most effective. Now what we see here is an RPO that is solved beautifully by Carson Wentz. The linebacker in blue falls for it without a shadow of a doubt. And that first step taken by Smallwood, that red step where he's looking at the outside linebacker, he can clearly see there are four blockers, there's three guys, he sees the advantage. The orange is where the ball goes, the green however is what the impact of the RPO has. Now, a more elusive back who's more than a one cut could potentially be a bit more aware and cut up field. Instead, at that point, Smallwood's got the world of space if he can just cut inside. Brooks loses his blocker, which almost blows that play dead. Now, Smallwood's lucky he stayed on his feet. He kept driving forward, and that was the strength. The weakness was he just simply wasn't a great decision maker in that instance. When the Red Sea is parted, as we saw here against the Giants, it's easy goings for Wendell Smallwood. But when it's a little bit more to do, when there are tacklers in the lane where he's got to make that cut, he can do things like this where he shifts inside thanks to a Zach Ertz block, but they just don't happen consistently enough. And when you have Corey Clement, who's becoming much more than a situational back, who kind of combines the best of both worlds, then it becomes harder for Smallwood to get those snaps because he doesn't really bring anything flashy to the table. He hits the hole, he gets a few yards, he gets the job done. But what about in prize protection? Now, he isn't asked to protect Carson Wentz all that much, but when he is, one of two things happen. Situation one, he gets a little bit overwhelmed and the pass is thrown under duress. Situation two, he throws in some Darren Sproles chip blocking and creates a big opportunity for Wentz to roll out and hit the home run pass on the outside. And that's kind of the double-edged sword we sit on with Wendell Smallwood. Again, the consistency isn't there. So what about when tackles are clogging the lane? What about when those red seas aren't parted? Here's what we see. Again, it's just a straight line and hoping for the best. And this is repeated throughout the season. And it's more than likely why the Eagles were so quick to pull the trigger on Jay Ajayi and just see him slip down the depth chart. He had two games against the Giants and the Chargers where he had a significant amount of carries and he couldn't really do much with them. We'll see it here, he's patient and waits. Now he keeps those legs going, he lowers his pads well, he prepares for the hit to push through and that's fantastic and that's a big improvement from what we saw last season where he was trying to do a bit too much with the ball but it's not enough. And the other aspect of it, where all the Eagles backs are now performing better than ever, is in the screen game. Coming into the NFL, if there's one thing Smallwood has struggled with, it's either making the catch in screens or being a receiving option out of the backfield. While there are big plays like this, they're too often littered with drops and inconsistencies, and there's just no real room 
for yards after the catch. Now in college, this wasn't an issue, but as Wentz turns and finds Smallwood here, the ball was thrown low, it's incomplete, and Smallwood has just seemed to maybe while increasing his route running ability, being a bit smoother in his breaks as we can see here, he can't quite finish the product. He goes down by himself, he's aware to get up and try running for the extra yards there, that does get reversed. But what we just see a little bit too much from Smallwood as we did in 2016, he's just not quite got the hands to be a steady receiving option out of the backfield. And when he is, there's just no room for those extra yards that you get with Corey Clement, that you get with Jay Ajayi. And what you have is just Wendell Smallwood, a running back who doesn't really present anything outstanding to the Eagles. What Ajayi specializes in, he's not going to be better than. What Clement specializes in, he's certainly not going to be better than after a 100-yard game in the Super Bowl receiving. There's just no real overall room for Smallwood other than a change of pace back. And with Blunt going, I'm sure he's still going to stick around and get those opportunities again. But he's very much remained the same type of back. Yes, he's running a bit harder. Yes, he's pushing a little bit extra on those runs. But he's still only got that one gear. He's still not as well rounded as the other backs on the roster. And this is going to hinder him moving forward. So what does the future hold? It's difficult to say. The Eagles could, of course, trade him, but as a return guard, there is still potential there for Wendell Smallwood, but he's not going to be getting a starting job, at least right away. Thank you so much for tuning into this video, guys. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe down below, hit that like button, and don't forget, there's daily Eagles content over at phillysportsnetwork.com, which is where I'm, you know, 24-7 spending my time. If you do want to support us, there's a Just Giving page down the bottom and there's a link to some fire merchandise as well. If there's a play you want me to break down, if there's an angle you want me to look at, leave it in the comments. Let's get this community growing. I want this to be your film room review as much as it is mine. Your support means the world to me. We'll see you next time.